Christmassy, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, another edition of my recent rotation, uh, number 10 I think. I'm really happy about all the comments uh, and responses I got from my last video. And I'm really happy that you all like the needle drops I made. So um, I'm planning to uh, continue with them forever, but I always have to see if YouTube allows them or not. So. Hope you had a good start uh, in the new year and um, that you're all well. Um, right now it's freezing cold here. And so um, I tend to listen to a lot of kind of summer music, even though it's cold, because I'm just wishing that it will get warmer. I'm not a winter kid, even though I'm uh, born in January, I really don't like winter. Well, I found it funny that I typed one on um, recent rotation. Um, sort of a wild mix, because they're always a wild mix. Um, this one will include some psych, some jazz, some world music, some pop even, some indie rock, um, some funk, yeah, all kinds of different stuff. Marcus Wall, a uh, self titled album from 1970, which was originally released over Odeon. This is the Live in the Attic reissue from 2013. Um, Marco Wall was uh, known in Brazil for uh, for Sanova styles as well as his brother and he had been to the US before making this album and you can kind of hear that on the album because it mixes Brazilian sounds with American influences and um, when this record was made in 1970 uh, the military dictatorship in Brazil was a full fact and um, so the uh, musicians had to be careful because of the uh, censorship and um, this album kind of has a really bubbly, mellow, summery feel to it um, but in disguise there are a lot of uh, social and political commentary written and the light in the attic usually came with some uh, great liner notes where um, this is explained a little bit more deeper, which I think is really interesting. And um, they even say uh, in the liner notes, which I found quite amusing, that uh, the Wild Brothers just put some gender mind tricks on the uh, dictatorship uh, because uh, it was like the tracks were also mellow and sweet and bubbly, that it was like during the gender mind tricks, these are not the political dissidents you're looking for. Quite amusing, and uh, the uh, cover is also really kind of playful and innocent, and uh, was made in the bedroom of uh, this elder sister. And yeah, I hope to include some new books because the album is really great. And I have uh, this is the first um, Marcos Val record that I own. Um, I have ordered two other uh, Latin Yetic reissues um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing them because it's just such a great album. featuring Picarde and Mascal uh, Pipio Jazz. This album was originally released in 1974 over Amat Records and uh, this is the 2015 Heaven Release Recreation. Um, I have shown Mulatu Astapke's uh, debut album Mulatu of Ethiopia before. Um, this is the second album I made and I, when I first heard it I was just totally blown away by the pure beauty of this record. Um, it's Ethiopian jazz, soul jazz, uh, mixed with some psychedelic and funk influences. And it's kind of hypnotic and tranquilizing and so mesmerizing. It's just amazing. Um, the 
track uh, you can also uh, might be familiar for some of you because it was used in uh, the Jim Jarmusch film Broken Flowers which I really can recommend and it just has this really awesome Ethiopian world influence with the soldiers which is really hard for and um, yeah it fits in one of my favorite uh, records I've bought in the last time so I hope to include some video clips of this too. joined by Bobby Hutcherson on Vibes in the Rimba, Gary Bartz on Alto Sax, Azar Lawrence on Soprano Sax and Tino Sax, John Stubblefield on Oboe and Flute, Buster Williams on Bass, uh, Billy Hart on the Drums, Mtumna on Conga Drums and Percussion and Guilherme Franco on Percussion. Um, yeah. I think this is one of my favorite McCoy Tyler outlets. Um, it's a highly energetic record, uh, really dynamic, and the players just go so well together. Um, yeah, highly recommended. released in 1977 over Rista. The first part, uh, side 1, and the first track of side 2 is recorded in Montreux and the rest is recorded in Berlin. And Anthony Braxton is playing sopranino sax, alto sax, clarinet and contrabass clarinet here. Kenny Wheeler is playing trumpet, Jay Holland is on bass, Barry Archul is tra playing drums, percussion and guns. In for the Berlin concert, he was joined by George Lewis on trombone, Dave Holland on bass, and Barry Ashton. And yeah, this is kind of what you expect from Anthony Braxton. Um, it's really nice, free, um, avant garde jazz. And um, there are six compositions by uh, Anthony Braxton here, and the improvisation uh, of the band numbers is just beautiful. We were well together. I was really happy to find this, and um, I think the side four is the weakest side on it, but the rest was really interesting and dynamic. This record is called Und, uh, which is end in uh, English, and this is a record that was recorded in 1972 uh, on EMI, and this is the 2012 Sonorama uh, and. Uh, the conductor of the record is Mlan Bopi Kutesha, which is a, a Serbian conductor who is known for his work with a um, lot of ECM records, uh, for example, Tele, Riftiles, Granada, uh, seem to be far away. And I found this for super cheap sealed uh, on the record pack, and I just had to grab it, and I'm really happy I did because it's just a magnificent piece. Um, it's kind of spiritual jazz funk, I would say. Um, it mixes uh, anti-war statements um, with some punk and spiritual jazz and drums and some folk music, some Latin American sounds. Um, here's a tribute to Martin Luther King and the I Have a Dream speech. Um, and really awesome uh, cover of Masks of War from Bob Dylan, which is so funky and spiritual, and I absolutely love it. Uh, there's a lot of choir used at the record, but I really, which is usually not my thing, but I really like it. And um, yeah, I think it's an amazing piece of artwork. It's incredibly funky and spiritual at the same time. Um, 
I hope to include especially the Master of War cover because it's so amazing. shown uh, a lot, especially in the realm of the Gimme 10 series and um, I was always making a mental note that I had to grab it when I see it and uh, um, it was even way way better than I had expected it to be and that's a Frippanino no pussy footing uh, which was originally released in 1973 this is the uh, 1977 Tony Domi shoe from UK and yeah, I don't think I have to say that much about it. It's awesome experimental um, ambient electronic music, really hypnotizing, uh, perfect for just relaxing your mind and um, yeah, just getting lost in the music. And, um, thank you all for showing this because it's just an awesome piece of music.
to a classic psychedelic release, um, Strawberry Lamb Club, Incense and Peppermints, which was originally released over Uni in 1967. Um, this is the Sunday issue from 2009. Uh, yeah, I think I don't have to say that much about Strawberry Alarm Clock. Uh, I was showing their second album uh, before. This is the debut album they made, and it's just the perfect psychedelic music. Really mellow, really high melodic, and amazing. Spell Könta Curse, whatever. It's the uh, UK first press from 1974. In case you uh, don't know Magma, um, it's a French progressive rock band which was founded by uh, Christian Mondaire. They had a really interesting approach. Um, they were developing their own uh, phonetic language and uh, even made some story about their own planet. Um, it's really interesting, intensive, dark and powerful pop music. Relax. 
relaxing and reminds me of summer. Originally recorded in 1971, uh, this is the 2016 Now Again Black Friday record store release. Um, this is the, uh, the full uh, 33 um, minute version of uh, Do You Think, uh, where he was jamming with uh, the bar case, and it's a perfect, terrific, uh, psychedelic funk jam, I would say. Um, Thanks for showing it Star Wars because it's just amazing and I just had to grab it after you were showing it and I was not disappointed. rock uh, band uh, which were recording around 1970 until 1972 but they only released three singles and this is kind of the complete uh, collection of the recordings they made and um, they mix Turkish folk music with psychedelic rock uh, some of them were uh, working with Erkan Koray and Berchmenko afterwards and it's a perfect uh, mix between the folk and the psychedelic rock, which I can highly recommend if you like this kind of work, psych music. away after a sudden and very severe illness and um, I found myself listening to this certain album almost on a daily basis before and after his death and I don't know why because um, it's kind of unusual for me um, because it's not the type of music I usually listen to but it just gets stuck in my head and, and this is Perfume Genius uh, Too Bright which was released in 2014 over Methadon. Um, I think Spinner Tree was showing this once and I was really happy to see this in the Z. Um, yeah, this is uh, the third album by the New York based singer-songwriter Mike Hadrius. Uh, kind of indie pop music, um, not the kind of metal thing you hear on the radio. Um, it's a really unusual record, but I really like it. Um, I have been listening to this digitally a lot and um, in 2016 I couldn't bring myself to listen to it quite a lot because it really gets me kind of emotional sometimes. Uh, but in December I decided to finally buy it on vinyl. And um, if you uh, have watched Mr. Robot, uh, you might know one song of it, Queen, uh, which was featured there. And the record is really interesting because it kind of has a really strong 80s feel to it, which is absolutely not my thing usually. But um, it's kind of frail and emotional and very strong at the same time. Um, has some really quite dark tracks on it, uh, but also some kind of mellow and hopeful tracks. So um, I don't know, it's a really interesting mix. Um, the record itself is really beautiful. And yeah, I just try to include some mini box so we can get a feel for the record. Sometimes 
once again which I will see at editing and yeah thank you so much for watching me rambling about my thoughts and um